Maybe you have been watching some high-level streams and see teams from both NA and EU do really well with Red Warrior. It's clear that Red Paladins and Arms Warriors are some of the best DPS specs in the game, but when you try playing this comp, you immediately notice that you can't just pop every CD in the opener and expect to win. So what makes Red Warrior so powerful, and how can you increase your rating playing this comp? Today we will be taking a deep dive into this composition and giving you the secret tips directly from some of the best players in the world. To start things off, let's go over some really basic strategy from this comp. Of course, you will need to adapt your playstyle depending on the comp that you're playing, but here are some general things you need to know to succeed as a Red Warrior. First, and probably most important, is that Red Warrior is a momentum-based comp. A lot of its success depends on riding out pressure that it builds early into the arena game. One of the things you will immediately notice about the best Red Warrior teams in the world is how quickly they establish pressure in an arena game. They will often pop all of their offensive cooldowns in the first few seconds of an arena game, starting pressure early and then riding out the momentum for the rest of the game. Keeping up this momentum is incredibly important. You have incredibly high front-loaded damage as this comp that you can often force major CDs early on into the arena game. And by the time your major offensives are up again, the enemy team might be behind on defensive CDs to respond to your damage. And that brings us to the second most important part of this comp, your own defensives. Your defensive cooldown rotation is incredibly important as this comp, not only because they reduce your damage taken, but more importantly because they allow you to keep your momentum. As Red Warrior, you have plenty of defensive cooldowns to ensure that you can be the aggressors in every arena game. There is that famous saying, the best defense is a good offense, and this is certainly true with Red Warrior. Your defensive CDs should be used to make sure you can maintain pressure throughout the entire game. The most important defensives on this comp actually come from the Warrior, which many people mistake as a pure DPS class. With spells as strong as Intervene, Warriors act more as a support class in this comp, using Intervene, Disarm, War Banner, and Rallying Cry to maintain aggression throughout an arena game. To demonstrate just how strong Warrior defensives are for this comp, let's break down an opener against RMP. Here, our warrior is able to bladestorm the rogue out of stealth, and to ensure the RMP does not get a clean opener, the rogue gets put into a full disarm. Meanwhile, our ret is still in a sap, and with our shaman counterspelled, our warrior is able to stop polymorph. Even though the opener has already been disrupted by the warrior, the RMP still has an opportunity to reverse pressure, and with wings up on our red paladin, we need to find a way to maintain pressure. Our shaman and paladin get put into full stuns. With Shadow Dance used by the Rogue, the RMP is looking to reverse pressure. Luckily, our Warrior is able to deny this reversal with a quick intervene onto the Red Paladin. To break up this opener even more and turn around pressure, our Warrior uses Intimidating Shout, eventually causing the Priest to use Will of the Forsaken. With this defensive stop on the enemy team, not only was the enemy kill attempt shut down, but now our team is able to ride out its offensive momentum, even against one of the scariest comps in the game. And finally, as a third general tip, we need to talk about win conditions. Generally speaking, your win condition is based on two things, your stuns and your offensive cooldowns. One of the most important parts about Red Warrior is managing your stuns. In an ideal world, you should try and line up Stormbolt on the healer with Hammer of Justice on the kill target. This will prevent the healer from dispelling the Hammer of Justice and will ensure that you have the longest possible lockdown on the kill target. These stuns should be lined up with the Divine Toll, ideally during Avenging Wrath or during Wings proc from Reckoning. Of course, this doesn't always happen, so sometimes you will find yourself with either Hammer of Justice or Stormbolt on cooldown when you want to go in and start a go. And this leads us to one of the biggest traps while playing this comp. Don't wait for the optimal win condition if it means you will lose momentum. Remember, your goal as Red Warrior is to ride out momentum for as long as possible. Sometimes you won't be able to cross CC perfectly with Stormbolt and Hammer of Justice, but this simply means that you should try and explore other cross CC options, like cross CC from your healer with Psychic Scream or Hex, depending on which healer you're playing with. Here's a high level team working around this problem. Even though the Warrior Stormbolt is down, the Red Warrior still needs to find a way to gain momentum. Combustion has just been used by the mage, and both our Priest and Paladin are on CCDR from the enemy team. Now is a perfect time to build momentum. In most cases, it would be best to stun the kill target, but with the amount of healing and CC a Pharaoh Druid can do, our Priest manages to cross CC with Holy Word Chastise onto the enemy Druid. With both the Priest and Druid locked down, the Mage cannot get any healing now. This winds up being the best play, with Ice Block being forced on the Mage. With a very simple cross CC improvisation, our team was able to reverse pressure and are now in a great offensive position. In any case, you should be looking for opportunities to cross CC as they present themselves. 
Try and line up Stormbolt and Hammer of Justice, but don't rely on the perfect situation. Sometimes you have to explore other options, like in the clip we just saw. Now that we've covered the foundation of Red Warrior, let's break some of these concepts up, starting with building momentum. Remember that Red Warrior is a momentum-based comp. You never want to let up pressure. One of the best ways to get the upper hand over your opponents is to build pressure early. Let's look at some common openers from some of the best Red Warriors in the world. Here we have a game against RMP. Even though we have a lot of tools to shut down the setups of this comp, their openers are still incredibly scary. In this matchup, our goal is to disrupt as much of the opener as possible and immediately turn around momentum. The Rogue Mage opens up with standard triple CC, but leaving a gap in between stuns allows us to use Blessing of Sanctuary on our Priest. Even though our entire team is in CC, our warrior manages to sneak in a war banner, disrupting most of the CC from the RMP. Despite this disruption, combustion is used from the enemy mage and our priest gets blinded. With mind games on our paladin, our priest is forced to trinket. Now that we've survived the opening damage, it's time to turn pressure around. This is the perfect opportunity to use wings, because our ret is both on stun and polymorph DR and with a blind already used on Priest, there are no available stops from the enemy team. This means we will be able to get full value from our Avenging Wrath. We managed to land a Hammer of Justice on the Priest to deny most of their Rapture cooldown. Our attention goes back to the Mage as we attempt to build momentum. The Mage is forced to Battle Master, soul shaping away. With our pressure, we have now managed to force trinkets from both the mage and the priest, giving us two strong targets for the rest of the game. Sometimes your openers will get deflected with enemy cooldowns, but that's perfectly fine. Your goal for the rest of the game should be finding opportunities to line up your cross CC and your damage again, gradually withering down the enemy's defensives. As long as you're able to force enemy defensives in the opener, your cooldowns have done their job. Besides, it would be crazy imbalanced if you were able to end every game in the opener with your cooldowns. Next, let's look at how you can use your defensives to stay aggressive. Remember, the goal of this comp is to ride out the offensive pressure you establish early on into the game. This means using your defensive cooldowns to keep the momentum that you have built early on into the game. For instance, it's often optimal to use Shield of Vengeance to push into the enemy team. Not only will it absorb damage, but it will also explode for bursts on nearby targets. Other cooldowns like Intervene can be used to deflect enemy attacks while also allowing your Red Paladin to stay pushed in. Let's recap the important abilities you have on your team. From the Warrior, you have Intervene, Rallying Cry, Disarm, and War Banner. And from the Red Paladin, the most important defensive cooldowns are Shield of Vengeance, Blessing of Sanctuary, and Blessing of Protection. The two spells that are most important here are Intervene and Blessing of Sanctuary. These are the two most crucial spells that you absolutely cannot mess up. Intervene is especially important in melee mirrors where it can be used to deny an entire setup. It should not be used randomly, but instead to deny the cooldowns of the enemy team. With that in mind, let's break down some cooldown usage from a top red warrior. Here we have a red warrior mirror where Intervene allows our team to maintain huge pressure in the opener. Our team starts out by getting some cross CC on the enemy healer and the red paladin. This cross EC forces the enemy Paladin to use a Trinket and Blessing of Sanctuary. With both teams popping offensives, our team needs to find a way to get the upper hand. This is exactly where Intervene comes in. Avenging Wrath and Avatar get used by the enemy melee DPS, and as a response, our warrior uses Intervene and die by the sword. With Intervene active on the Red Paladin, all damage will be transferred to the warrior. But with Die by the Sword active, all of this melee damage will be parried. Because of this, neither the warrior nor the Paladin will be taking physical damage. During Die by the Sword, our team is able to reverse momentum. With all damage being reduced with Intervene and Die by the Sword, our Priest is able to keep our melee DPS topped. While the enemy Resto Shaman now has to heal both of his partners who are starting to drop low in HP. With this defensive cooldown usage from our warrior, we were able to completely deflect the enemy kill attempt, and in doing so, we gain pressure over the enemy team. Now let's look at another game where our team uses defensives to reverse pressure. Here we have a Windwalker Mage team. Our Ret is stuck in a poly, Combustion is available, and our Druid is getting swapped to. Recognizing the threat of this situation, our Ret trinkets out to use Blessing of Sanctuary on our Druid. This will break our druid out of the stun and allow him to use Frenzied Regeneration to deny the kill. There's one problem though, the mage is ready with another polymorph. This is where our warrior makes an incredibly clutch play. Using the spell reflection legendary called Misshapen Mirror, he is able to reflect the polymorph onto the red paladin. Our ret is now able to save the druid with a blessing of sanctuary. With the druid save and our wings still active, we want to maintain pressure. In order to get the most value out of our wings, we need to make sure we can stay in. Weapons of Order is still up from the Monk, and Combustion gets used by the Mage. Huge damage is coming. Our team responds with multiple defensive cooldowns. 
normally it is good to space out defensive cooldowns, but due to the damage of Windwalker Mage, we need a massive defensive response. And with our Reckoning stacks almost at 50, we need to stay in and keep up pressure. Using our team's defensive cooldowns, not only were we able to deny a kill, but we were able to stay aggressive with our Avenging Wrath. This defensive cooldown usage allowed our team to become the aggressors in the matchup. Remember, as Red Warrior, you are looking to build and keep momentum by any means necessary. Sometimes, this means staying in with your aggression even in the face of enemy cooldowns. Before we talk about targeting as Red Warrior, we wanted to tell you about the amazing things happening on our website, skillcaps.com wow. Every week, we work with some of the best players in the world to bring you the highest quality instructional content. If you're looking for a place to take your gameplay to the next level, we certainly have a place for you. Whether or not you're just starting your PvP journey, or if you're looking to climb to the top of the ladder, we have guides for you. Our course guides will give you tactics and tips directly from the best WoW players of all time. So if you're looking to get an edge over your opponents, make sure to check us out at skillcaps.com WoW. Next, let's talk about targeting choices, since this seems to be the most confusing part of Arena for many players. In general, you want to pick the safest target to attack. This means picking the target that has an equal proportion of offensive and defensive value for your team. For instance, a good target to pick is one that has spammable crowd control like a mage or a warlock. Going on a target like this will allow you to deal high physical damage but will also allow you to disrupt important CC on your team. Regardless if you interrupt a polymorph meant for a healer or a DPS, you will ensure that you are able to have the most momentum by keeping your healer and DPS out of CC. With that in mind, you should keep your targeting options open, not relying on a single target to train the entire game but instead being flexible with who you attack. There will be moments during arena games where you cannot connect to the kill target. Use these moments to attack other targets, focusing primarily on dealing as much damage as possible for as long as possible. There are some specs that can be easily trained as Red Warrior, and one of them is Disc Priest because of their limited mobility options and poor passive damage mitigation. But in general, you should be willing to swap around more and hit multiple targets to maintain pressure. Now let's look at a situation where target swapping plays a huge role in reversing pressure during a game. Here we can see a game against Shatter play with a lot happening. Power Infusion has been used by the Priest with the Mage in a position to cast Polymorph on the entire team. This is a difficult situation. Do you let the Priest free cast with CDs or do you try and shut down the Mage? With Polymorph being deathed already by our Priest, our healer is on CCDR, but the positioning of the Mage presents a problem for our team. The Mage is now in a position to control everyone on our team with Polymorph, and that alone is a bigger problem than a Priest with Power Infusion. Even though the Priest will be doing a lot of damage, a free casting Mage will shut down any momentum we could build. The Mage is also coming off stun DR, allowing us to shut them down for a few seconds. With the kill attempt on our Paladin deflected, it is time to reverse pressure and gain momentum again. Here we can see the mage is stunned, which allows our priest to push in for a fear. Following the stun, the mage gets Blessing of Sacrifice and immediately soul shapes away. With soul shape and Blessing of Sacrifice active, it will be impossible to build pressure on the mage. Luckily for us, the paladin and priest are now stacked. With Blessing of Sacrifice dealing damage to the paladin, it is the perfect time to swap healer. The paladin sees this swap and is forced to use divine protection. Meanwhile, due to the poor positioning of the priest, we were able to do enough cleave damage to force dispersion. Now with Blessing of Sacrifice, Divine Protection, and Dispersion on cooldown, we have opened up multiple kill attempts for our team. Here is another example of flexible targeting against a Windwalker Mage team. Up to this point in the game, the monk had been the primary kill target. Monks are relatively squishy and die really easily outside of their mobility. Arcane Mages also have incredible mobility, making them difficult to train down. Here, we can see the monk has ported away from our team, leaving the arcane mage in our face. Although we have already forced cooldowns from the monk, if we decide to chase him, it will leave a mage in a free casting position to control our entire team. Once again, the monk is an incredibly slippery target and has already committed to running away. This leaves the mage as an excellent swap target, especially without a trinket for our stun. Here we can see the power of cross CC, with both the mage and the priest being put into full stuns. With this cross CC and Avenging Wrath and Divine Toll use, the mage is forced to ice block immediately. And without any stops or mass dispel, our priest is able to instantly dispel the block and end the game. We've already discussed how DPS defenses play a huge role in maintaining your aggression, and the same thing applies to your healer's defenses. The primary support role your healer brings in this comp is to rotate CDs effectively with your team. The Red and Warrior have plenty of defensive options themselves, but the healer in this comp should also actively rotate CDs to keep your team's momentum. 
With that in mind, there are some other ways healers can support in this comp, and that is with control and damage. So let's take a look at some really advanced play a priest uses to win the game. Here we have a red warrior against an RMP. Although we have just forced ice block, the RMP could reverse at any moment with combustion available. Our priest gets interrupted on mass dispel, but pay attention to his buffs. Prior to the ice block, our priest had used thought steal on the mage, stealing their polymorph. With our priest now having polymorph, our team now has an additional control option, and more importantly, we have taken away an important control option from the enemy team. Without polymorph, our team can be very aggressive. With Polymorph stolen, our priest also has another spell school, allowing them to cast Polymorph immediately after being interrupted on their holy school. The enemy team goes for the kill, with both Smoke Bomb and Combustion being committed. Luckily, our melee are able to respond with defensive CD rotation. The Red Paladin uses Blessing of Sanctuary to break the warrior out of stuns, allowing them to use Die by the Sword and Intimidating Shout, shutting down the kill. Our priest goes for a Flash Heal, baiting an interrupt from the mage. With Thought Steel still active, this allows our Priest to cast another Polymorph on the enemy healer. Now with Interrupts down and the Priest stuck in another Polymorph, our Priest is able to cast Mind Games on the Mage right before Cauterize procs. The Cauterize heal gets reversed, instantly killing the Mage. With some clever Thought Steel usage, our Priest was able to keep momentum for his team and end the game with control and damage onto the enemy Mage. And there you have it, some of the highest level plays from Red Warrior. If you're playing this comp, remember that it is all about building momentum. Try and establish pressure early with offensive cooldowns and then rotate your team's defenses in order to keep up on pressure. Cross CC as often as possible, but be flexible with your control options. If you manage to do all of this, we guarantee that you will have increased success as this comp. If you like this video, please let us know in the comments below. If you want to keep up with future uploads, make sure to subscribe and turn all notifications on. That way you will never miss a video. See you soon!